stuff with Radha. I only have five of them. This is nice. What are you going to do with this? What are you going to do with this? Okay, let's start. The first thing we call it. First one is this. No, I'm sorry. Go go to the other room. This is going to make noise. We need to make noise here. Can you go to the other room and play? Can you go to the other room and play? Oh, everybody is getting disturbed. Okay, very quiet. Oh, it's noise. You make this noise. Hmm. Yeah, making this noise. There's a lot of stuff here. Okay, let's start. I don't know this time. Om the moon, the moon, the moon, Om the moon, the moon, the the moon, the moon, the the read continue our reading canto 3 the status quo chapter 22 the marriage of Kardama Muni and Deva Huti text 1 Maitreya Uvacha Maitreya Uvacha Evam Avikrita Shesha Evam Avishkrita Shesha Guna Karmada Yomunim Guna Karmada Yomunim Savrida Ivatam Samrat Savrida Ivatam Samrat Uparatam Uvacha Uparatam Uvacha Shri Maitreya said after describing the greatness of the Empress Manifold qualities and activities, the sage became silent, and the emperor, feeling modesty, addressed him as follows. Text 2. Yusman Atma Parishya Chando Mayastapo Vidya Chando Mayastapo Vidya Yoga Yuktan Alam Alam Patan Yoga Yuktan Alam Patan Manu replied To expand himself in Vedic knowledge Lord Brahma, the personified Veda From his face created you, the Brahmanas Who are full of austerity, knowledge and mystic power And are averse to sense gratification so here, Prabhupada writes, it is specifically mentioned here that the Brahmanas are created from the face of the cosmic personality of Virat Purusha. Similarly, the Kshatriyas are said to be created from his arms, Vaishyas are created from his waist, and the Shudras are created from his legs. Brahmanas are especially meant for austerity, learning, and knowledge and are averse to all kinds of sense gratification. Continue, text 3. Tatrana yasrachasman Tatrana yasrachasman for the protection of the Brahmanas, the thousand-legged Supreme Being created us, the Kshatriyas, from his thousand arms. Hence the Brahmanas are said to be his heart and the Kshatriyas his arms. 
So the Prabhupada Srila Prabhupada explains about this thing. So and that the Lord is very um, dear to the Brahmanas. So there Prabhupada explains the Lord is described as Namo Brahmanya Devaya Go Brahmanaya Vitaricha. The purpose of this prayer is that the Lord specifically protects the Brahmanas and the cows, and then He protects all other members of society. Jagadithaya. It is His will that universal welfare work depends on the protection of cows and Brahmanas. Thus, Brahminical culture and cow protection are the basic principles for human civilization. So, the duty of the Kshatriya is to protect the Brahmanas and the other two Varnas. So that is their job. And reason is because the Brahmanas, in this case, the Brahmanas are very dear to uh, Lord Vishnu. So, therefore, uh, Swambhu Manu is saying that they are dear, they are the heart of the Lord. So, therefore, he is glorifying the Brahmanas. Text 4. That is why the Brahmanas and Kshatriyas protect each other as well as themselves and the Lord himself, who is both the cause and effect, and is yet immutable, protects them to each other. In the Purport, Prabhupada explains, the Brahmanas are intended to be protected by the Kshatriyas, and the Kshatriyas also are intended to be enlightened by the Brahmanas. When the Brahmanas and Kshatriyas cooperate nicely, the other subordinate divisions the Vaishyas or mercantile people and the Shudras or labor class automatically flourish. So, for it to be taking place in a nice way, the Brahmanas and Kshatriyas are very important. They have to work together nicely. Then the others can uh, function together. Otherwise, it's going to be chaos. The entire elaborate system of Vedic society was therefore based on the importance of the Brahmanas and Kshatriyas. You will see basically the Bhagavatam is all about Brahmanas and Chattis. <laughs> right? And then when you talk about uh, when it comes to Krishna, then you know it involves the Vaishya. The Goraksha Vaishyas like that. That's about all. Right? Predominantly it's about the Brahmanas and Chattis. The Lord is a real protector, but he's unattached to the affairs of protection. So he does his protection either directly or through the Kshatriyas. He creates Brahmanas for the protection of the Kshatriyas and the Kshatriyas for the protection of the Brahmanas. <coughs> so he, he directly sometimes doesn't come to do things. He doesn't have to because it's so structured. And the Brahmanas and the Kshatriyas can take care of the whole uh, uh, system of our national. Text 5. Now I have resolved all my doubts simply by meeting you. Your Lordship has very kindly and clearly explained the duty of a king who desires to protect his subjects. So Manu glorified the so I mean the Kardama Muni. And in the purple Prabhupada talks about what like Lord Chaitanya says. Lord Chaitanya says that one should always try to associate with saintly persons. So Manu is also feeling that way. That he is in the uh, in an association with someone who is very advanced. And so Prabhupada says one should always try to associate with saintly persons. Why? Because if one establishes a proper association, 
with the saintly person, even for a moment, one attains all perfection. Blava Madhya Sarva Siddhi Hoi. So again, somehow or other, if one meets a saintly person, and achieves his favor, then the entire mission of one's human life is fulfilled. So again, the emphasis is there. Uh, Prabhupada is explaining how he himself got this mercy. So he continues. In our personal experience, we have actual proof of this statement of Manu. Once we had the opportunity to meet Vishnu Bhada Sri Srimad Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj and on, our, on first sight he requested this humble self to preach his message in the western countries. There was no preparation for this but somehow or other he desired it. And by his grace we are now engaged in executing his order which has given us a transcendental occupation and has saved and liberated us from the occupation of material activities. So he was doing, and he feels so uh, happy, grateful to his spiritual master. Otherwise he feels that he will be stuck in this material life. And then he says, thus it is actually a fact that if one meets a saintly person completely engage in transcendental duties and achieves his favor, then one's life mission becomes complete. It means whatever our situation, uh, if we have a spiritual master, then our life becomes meaningful. Uh, our goal of life becomes uh, complete also. Otherwise, we will pursue some sense enjoyment. Have to. We have no choice. What is not possible to achieve in thousands of lives can be achieved in one moment. Thousands of lives can be achieved in one moment. If there is an opportunity to meet a saintly person. So that is one of the things Prabhupada wanted to create. The opportunity to meet saintly person. So he, he actually developed ISKCON for this reason. So that other people can get that opportunity. So that's his compassion. He was thinking for a future also. So by by creating ISKCON, then so many of us are able to actually get that benefit instead of going through lifetimes, lifetimes. Prabhupada has cut down thousands of lifetimes for us. If you think carefully. <laughs> so this is a, a great service he has done for the Lord. Okay. It is therefore enjoined in Vedic literature that one should always try to associate with saintly persons and try to dissociate oneself from the common man. Because by one word of a saintly person, one can be liberated from material entanglement. It's a fact though. Uh, it may not be directly obvious, but then you can take the example of Bilva Mangal Thakur. No? When he was uh, with Chintamani, she spoke the words of his guru and immediately changed his life no? as soon as he heard that. Uh, so that, therefore the statement is correct. No? One word can save us. So if we are sincerely listening, you will change like that. A saintly person has the power because of his spiritual advancement to give immediate liberation to the conditioned soul. Okay. And then, <coughs> let's see. Yeah, basically he may, the king here is expressing his good fortune of meeting a person like Kardamamani. It's not easy to meet people like his caliber. Very exalted. Very exalted. Pure devotee. How often we meet pure devotees? <laughs> Very rare. So therefore he is so happy and he is praising him also. Text 6. 
दिष्टिया में भगवान दृष्ट दिष्टिया में भगवान दृष्ट दर्शो यो it is my good fortune that I have been able to see you, for you can, cannot easily be seen by persons who have not subdued the mind or controlled the senses. I am all the more fortunate to have touched with my head the blessed dust of your feet. So it's a proper prayer. Uh, it's very exalted and uh, one should actually take a humble position in front of such a person. So even in spiritual matters also when you meet your spiritual master you always uh, bow down, pay obeisance with your forehead on the ground. Take the dust where that uh, spiritual master has walked. In the book of Prabhupada says in the second paragraph, the parampara system of disciplic succession is very important as a means of spiritual success. One becomes a mahat by the grace of his mahat spiritual master. If one takes shelter of the lotus feet of a great soul, there is every possibility of one also becoming a great soul. Yeah, so all of us here have the opportunity to, be, to become great souls. In this life, or oh, you can, according to how you are attached or detached, you will progress accordingly. But the point is, uh, we will all become great souls if we follow what Prabhupada has taught us. Because we all have bona fide spiritual masters. And our spiritual masters are also following very nicely Srila Prabhupada. So whatever Prabhupada touched turns into gold in that sense. Perfect. He's perfect so he can make perfect disciples. And so when we follow his perfect disciples, we also become perfect disciples like that. It only uh, requires uh, dedication, uh, perseverance and uh, concentration. <coughs> Yeah, so that is very important. Simply by following the instructions <coughs> of a bona fide spiritual master, one becomes perfect. Text 7. I have fortunately been instructed by you and thus great favor has been bestowed upon me. I thank God that I have listened with open ears to your pure words. Because <coughs> uh, when he came, Kadama Muni said a few things about what the king has to do and so on. So he took that as a uh, good instruction. <laughs> yeah. uh, for most of the, uh, for us, we will not think like, you say, why the guy is talking like that? <laughs> but uh, Manu, Swambhu Manu is immediately taking that as uh, good advice. It's a positive advice for me. Huh? I can use that for my advancement. So, so in the second paragraph, Prabhupada says it is especially mentioned here that one should be very inquisitive to hear with open ears from the authorized source of the bona fide spiritual master. How is one to receive? One should receive the transcendental message by oral reception. The word karna randrahi means through the holes of the ears. The favor of the spiritual master is not received through any other part of the body but the ears, oral reception, okay? It has to be through the ears. It's opposite of the shloka. Which one? 
Yeah, that's fine. But I'm saying, I mean, what they brought up was uh, 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 an opposite to what this statement is. Huh? How are they going to receive that? And the others are not willing to receive like that. So it's <coughs> Even the previous verse I was thinking, Sarvam 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 obtained by the people who are not subdued in mind and senses. Yes. So he's saying the same thing to the devotee also. Yeah. yeah. Devotee the Lord because they are carrying the Lord in their hearts. So, so even yes. they cannot be approached if yes. they are not ready for that or pure or not qualified. So that's, yeah, that's a good realization. Yeah. Nice. <clears throat> Prabhupada continues, the word Karna Randrai means through the holes of the Yes, the favor of the spiritual master is not received through any other part of the body but the ears. Okay, it's not like he is going to touch, you know, like some people say. It's not like that. Or he won't put his head against your head and then pass some message or power. <laughs> it's not like that. Okay, it is only you hear and you realize. Generally, knowledge has to go through our hearing, right? <laughs> It's, if you can't hear and you just watch, it, you can get some knowledge, but it's not complete. It's very hard to understand. So those who can't hear, it's very hard for them to understand what you're trying to say and so on. So therefore, you have to hear. So Prabhupada says, this does not mean, however, that the spiritual master gives a particular type of mantra through the years in exchange for some dollars. Right? There are people who talk like that. Actually, who, who does this thing? Uh, Mahara, Maharishi, Yogi. They have to pay $400 or something and then they get a mantra. So that's and they, they can achieve something. And then Prabhupada says, and if the man meditates on that, he achieves perfection and becomes God within six months. So that's Maharishi uh, philosophy. Yeah. Such reception through the years is bogus. So the real fact is that the bona fide spiritual master knows the nature of a particular man and what sort of duties he can perform in Krishna consciousness. And he instructs him in that way. He instructs him through the year, not privately, but publicly. You are fit for such and such work in Krishna consciousness. You can act in this way. One person is advised to act in Krishna consciousness by working in the deity's room. Another is advised to act in Krishna consciousness by performing editorial work. Another is advised to do preaching work. And another is advised to carry out Krishna consciousness in the cooking department. There are different departments of activity in Krishna consciousness and a spiritual master knowing the particular ability of a particular man 
trains him in such a way that by his tendency to act, he becomes perfect. So that is important. How to guide someone according to their nature. Based on their nature, they can improve their Krishna consciousness. Therefore, there are so many activities in our uh, Krishna conscious movement, society. Uh, one should be willing to take those things up, you know, willing to do service, to improve and so that we can become perfect. This is like the Varnashram. Yeah, in a sense it is. Yeah, because the they, they know your nature and so they say do this. Yeah. It is like that. Uh, if you don't, uh, if you don't pursue in this line, then we will only not improve ourselves. We will just sit at home or, and then not really challenge our ego, false ego, by doing services and take up preaching activities. We are always uh, putting our false ego down, our real ego is to serve, so that will be trained. Uh, that's what's going to make us perfect. If you're not going to challenge, in, in, I'm using the word challenge because it's a challenge to actually put aside your ego and do things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we have to do that. Yeah, we have to take that. That may be our uh, surrender, surrendering process. Because even though you may be comfortable in doing something, that comfortable thing will drag you down also. You become too comfortable and you won't make the advancement. So the spiritual master knows this. Uh, he'll say, okay, do this, now you go and preach. Then you may be thinking, oh, now I'm a great preacher. Then your spiritual master say, come back, I want to do this again. <laughs> like that. So why he's training you? And the main thing is you train happily. Service must be done uh, without any worries. Oh, I, 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 I like that more than this. I feel, that kind is like a sakama bhakta. I like that. No? Your point is you have to become niskama devotee. You are willing to do things that are beneficial for the whole uh, movement. In our case, the iskama movement. Bhagavad Gita makes it clear that one can attain the highest perfection of spiritual life simply by offering service according to his ability. Just as Arjuna served Krishna by his ability in the military art. Arjuna offered his service fully as a military man and he became perfect. Similarly, an artist can attain perfection simply by performing artistic work under the direction of the spiritual master. If one is a literary man, he can write articles and poetry for the service of the Lord under the direction of his spiritual master. One has to receive the message of the spiritual master regarding how to act in one's capacity. For the spiritual master is expert in giving such instructions. Of course, the spiritual master is not going to get involved in your Material life is too much. Yeah. Uh, he'll say, try this thing. He's not going to say, no, no, this is how you do it. He's not going to do that. Yeah. He may give some uh, advice, but he's. But one shouldn't go to the spiritual master for material things. Yeah. One should go to the spiritual master for advancing in spiritual man. Yeah. But he will guide you according to your nature. We sometimes can't see. And we won't listen to many people, so it's best to go to the spiritual master. Hopefully we listen to the spiritual master. Uh, oftentimes the spiritual master will not tell you, you must do, because what happens if you don't do? It? No. Then you're committing offense. So therefore they can't force you also. And they don't want you to commit an offense. <laughs> right? Yeah. So that's the idea behind a spiritual master or a siksha guru or diksha guru. That's the whole idea behind it. You give instructions so that they can do and uh, and you, you encourage them so that they, even though it may be a little slightly difficult, but they can by their austerities and their determination 
and their love for the Guru, they can do it. And then after the increase, make it a little bit harder and harder. So <laughs> immediately you can't do that, right? If tomorrow if your Guru says, I want you to go to this city and so and so place and settle there, quit your job, start a center. Can you do that? So you do not know. Right? You may not be ready. So your spiritual master must will understand you where you are and say, I want you to do this. I want you to give up this. You help me. And then if you are ready, you'll say yes. <laughs> but that's that's how it is actually in our system. Right? Like I was saying before also. Many times the spiritual master can tell, Oh, I want you to manage this place. And then later on you'll say, Okay, I don't, you're okay now, I don't want you to manage anymore. Now you do this. Then it may be like a big position to no small position. <laughs> so if you are attached to all this thing, you will be disturbed. That means you're not making advancement. <clears throat> but if you're happily doing it in both situations, there's no, no problems. Because the idea is you are serving the spiritual master. You're serving the Supreme Personality, God, and they become pleased with whatever service you do, right? Even in the spiritual world, Krishna is pleased with the grass, is pleased with the tree, pleased with the cowherd boys, cows, and like that. He's not saying, oh, I only like them more than yours. He never says that. <laughs> yeah. So similarly, it's not a, that you have to be the biggest preacher or something, you know. Do your service nicely and happily. Then you'll see that you will make a lot of nice uh, advancement. And you'll understand the purports of the Vedas. <laughs> yeah? We, we studied that also, right? Yeah. And you must have fixed uh, faith in your spiritual master. Just like the spiritual master has fixed faith in his guru all the way to the Supreme Lord, Brahma Nishtam. You also must have that fix. Yes. So that must be there. So then you say, oh, my spiritual master wants me to do this. How kind he is. <laughs> Instead of thinking why he is asking me to do this. <laughs> so that's the point about being grateful. Where uh, Manu is very grateful for that instruction uh, Kardama Muni gave him even though uh, we can't see what's so great about that but he saw that he's helping me in my spiritual life <laughs> he's informing me how I should do my duties properly and that's the role of the Brahmanas and the Kshatriyas are meant to learn from that yeah. you want to say something yeah this happened a few years ago somebody was saying I do not talk to my spiritual master that much because he may say something that I may not be able to do. Yeah. That means he's a fool. Fool number one. And when the guru leaves his body, no instructions then. Then he's happy. Can do all nonsense. So that means he's not a good disciple. That's what it is. Yeah, okay. If ever we feel that, oh, I hope my guru don't tell me, that's why you took a guru there. You rascal. <laughs> right? That's the reason why. I, that's why you have to be very careful who is taking it. Not, it's not a numbers game. Oh, you know, 10 people initiated now, 100 people, 1,000, 15 million, like that. What is the point? No. Whoever we guide also, we have to know these guys, they must be serious spiritual life. Otherwise, don't uh, bring them to your spiritual master. They will, your guru has to initiate, take the karma and suffer. And they will be doing nonsense. So you have to be very careful. That's it. Shodamarasi Vinasya, 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 Shodamarasi V
O great sage, graciously be pleased to listen to the prayer of my humble self. For my mind is troubled by affection for my daughter. So after praising him, he's like, please, will you listen to my problem? <laughs> I have this is issue with concerning my daughter. Okay. Text 9. My daughter is the sister of Priyavrata and Uttanapada. She is seeking a suitable husband in terms of age, character and good qualities. So he's introducing his uh, sons as well, so that because they are famous. <laughs> so that is my. He's also saying that the, the girl is also qualified. Uh, she comes from a very good family, not from a some rotten family or something. So, continue text then. The moment she heard from the sage Narada of your noble character, learning, beautiful appearance, youth and other virtues, she fixed her mind upon you. Now he's dropping the message. <laughs> so from previously we were reading, it's not like they just came to Kardamani. It's because Devahuti herself had told her father, I am interested in Kardamani <coughs> because I heard from Narada. And Narada Muni was probably inspired by the Supreme Lord because Kardama Muni was already intending to have her a proper wife. So it's all arranged in, in, in some ways you can see. This is arranged by the Lord Himself. <laughs> right? The whole thing is arranged by the Lord for Kardama Muni as well as for Devahuti. Because, as Prabhupada says in the purport, Devahuti did not uh, secretly come and meet uh, Kardama Muni. You know? <laughs> not like nowadays, right? You, know, you don't know if you, have a, if you have a son or a daughter. You don't know whether they open the window and jump out and run in the night, right? You do not know. <laughs> it happens even now. <laughs> you do not know. They go and then they come back. Just like Krishna's pastime, he goes and comes back by the time the parents come and check on the room. People are doing this nowadays also, doing all nonsense. Yeah. But here you can see, and this, she just because she heard, she got very attracted to uh, Kardamani. And who was the other character, if you can remember? Rukmini. Yes, Rukmini. Yeah, she heard also about Krishna and she gave her heart to Krishna like that. Text 11. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the girl wouldn't even get a chance to see the boy yeah. until the marriage. Yes. Like on the day of the marriage. But now it's gone that far that they actually live together. Yeah. And then they like them, they marry. Them. Yeah, yeah. Now it's so all it degraded. Yeah, it's degraded. Yeah. It's all degraded. It's very bad. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, right? Selfies. <coughs> they take their own picture and put nonsense. And all kinds of stupid things they put on there. <laughs> I know a lot of you on Facebook and so on, but you know, there are bad things, good things. If you use it properly, it's good. If you don't, then you know. That's it. If you if if you are working in the material world and you have a bad thing about yourself on the Facebook, then your employers, everybody knows. Right. Even if you don't friend them, they can somehow because each one of you are separated by another person by degree of six only. Now before interviewing somebody, like when I'm interviewing or I'm being interviewed, you ask. I check on LinkedIn, <laughs> Facebook, all these keyword searches, 
and see what the public presence is. Yeah. If the public presence is not very good, you don't hire them. Mm. You don't call them for interview. Don't even call yeah. them for interview. That's what I was telling my daughter and uh, Varsha, who is you know, Dola's daughter, mm. because they were like exchanging mails on Google Plus, and I said every one of your transaction will be used by an employer sometime in the future. That's uh, that's how it is nowadays. Yeah. So you, your your point is true. In those days it wasn't like that. They were more chaste. They People don't even get a chance to actually talk to them and talk to them. No, they the don't. Marriage, my parents, I can like only my mother has told me. Yeah. Only on the day of the marriage, you saw my father. Mm. How about you? <laughs> I, yeah, I saw here from here once and that's it. Mm. After going to India only. I yeah, so it's pretty honorable. <laughs> Like someone was saying, right? Their friend got divorced and was saying that if they had known they were about it, was it last yeah, yeah, Christmas? Yeah, Christmas Day. He was saying if he would have known the culture yeah. in which he was brought up, then exactly, it would have been better. So it's so different. So Prabhupada wants us to develop this culture. That's one of the reasons for ISKCON movement. Uh, that means. As grihasas, all of you, most of you, so you need to also uh, bring your children up in that way also. Inculcate these values in them. Why, what's the benefit of it? Not just say they can't, they, you know, you can't just tell them, don't do this, don't do this. No, they must understand. Uh, if they can't understand, how can they act on something? So you, you need to do that. Yeah. It's important. All right, text 11. Therefore, please accept her, O chief of the Brahmanas, for I offer her with faith. And she is in every respect fit to be your wife and take charge of your household duties. Hmm. She's a princess, you know, <laughs> and he is a sage. And, then the, the, and because she, her heart is set on him, the king is bringing her and saying, I'm sure she will do all this. I, I, I have faith in her so much. He has so much love for his daughter. And he wants to please her, his daughter also, to to get the husband of her choice. <laughs> and he also knows he's of a, a good uh, caliber husband. So that's <coughs> so basically. Therefore, he says, "Griha may may the in the house, not griha may the means in the house." Uh, so that's the difference. Griya Medhi means they're just enjoying. But here he's a Grihasta. So household affairs, duties. Okay, text 12. <laughs> To deny an offering that has come of itself is not commendable. Even for one absolutely free from all attachment, much less one addicted to sensual pleasure. So he's saying, you know, this is, you didn't uh, look for it, but it's coming. So good fortune like that, you shouldn't. Reject good fortunes like that. Why good fortune? Because uh, they were this very qualified person, not not an unqualified. She says qualified to be his uh, wife. <coughs> in the purple Prabhupada writes, in material life, everyone is desirous of sense gratification. Therefore, a person who gets an object of sense gratification, without endeavor, should not refuse to accept it. Uh, indirectly, he's saying, you know, Kagama Muni, you're looking for a wife. So I, I'm bringing it, so you shouldn't refuse it. <laughs> Kagama Muni was not meant for sense gratification, yet he aspired to marry 
and prayed to the Lord for a suitable wife. This was known to Swayamvuva Manu. He indirectly convinced Kardama Muni, You desire a suitable wife like my daughter and she is now present before you. You should not reject the fulfillment of your prayer. You should accept my daughter. <laughs> so he also knew about this. Probably Narada told him, you know. Right? <laughs> Otherwise, how they know? <laughs> right? Yeah. Text 13. One who rejects an offering that comes of its own accord, but later begs a boon from a miser, thus loses his widespread reputation. And his pride is humble by the neglectful behavior of others. So somebody gives you something, you say, no, no, I don't want, I'm okay. And then later on you go and ask the same thing, please give me. <laughs> I need mean, So that's not a good thing according to uh, Manu. So if it comes on its own, then we should accept it to so that we will graciously and say, not for sense and joy, but to use it in the service of Krishna like that. That's how you should accept. And then if you ask, if you say no, and then later ask the person won't respect you much. Say hey, this guy, you know what is this? He wants he come. <laughs> so that, therefore, your pride is humbled by the neg neglectful behavior of others. They won't respect you so much. In the Purpa, Prabhupada says the general procedure of Vedic marriage is that a father offers his daughter to a suitable boy. That is a very respectable marriage. A boy should not go to the girl's father and ask for the hand of his daughter in marriage. So nowadays this is the custom, especially in America. right? Or West, I should say West. Even people who grow up here, they... The girl uh, tells the boy, you have to ask my father and so on for handing. <laughs> it is like that. <laughs> you can't change that. So that's how the situation is. And you don't know, right? The father can say, no. <laughs> how you feel? <laughs> I don't want my daughter to marry you. You useless guy. Get lost from my house. Get the shotgun. <laughs> Anyway, uh, usually I guess it doesn't happen. But nowadays the boy and girl always associating, the parents know. So when they ask, it's a formality. Hmm? <laughs> so basically, he is offering to Kadamamuni, take my daughter. You're, she's qualified, you're qualified. So please take. Uh, in the In the in the last line, Prabhupada writes, Therefore, in offering one's daughter to a person, the culture and quality are counted as prominent, not wealth or any other material consideration. Now this is all wealth, right? How much you give me for dowry? Right? That's all they will ask. They won't ask, what is the girl's qualification? Is she Krishna conscious? Right? No, they'll say, can she dance? Does she like Bollywood dance or this dance? Right? Karayana. So, can she sing? These are the things they ask. They don't say, can she cook? That's okay. We can go to McDonald's, KFC. That's okay. They don't ask, is she Krishna conscious? Right? So, Prabhupada says that's not. Culture and quality should be there. Very important. So therefore, as parents, you should raise your children to have both culture and nice qualities. Important. Because that will be pleasing to the Lord, to the Acharyas and so on. Right? Text 14. Aham Viva 
Swayam Bhuva Manu continued. O oh, wise man, I heard that you were prepared to marry. Please accept a hand which has been offered to you by me since you have not taken a vow of perpetual celibacy. So he also knows that Kadama Muni wasn't going to be a you know, lifelong uh, celibate like that. And he has already heard he wanted to marry. So he said, "Why? what are you thinking about? You should accept. <laughs> Don't think too much. <coughs> Anyway, he, he's going to accept. It's just, it's just nice the way they are doing it. There's no... The other thing is, the daughter is already there with uh, Swayam Manu. They already brought the daughter. So it's, it's just going to be marriage, immediate marriage. <laughs> it's no question of go back and then uh, have a big party, you know, call the whole world like that. It's, it's an interesting scene because that's exactly what happens. He just gives the daughter to the Brahman and he'll leave. <laughs> Text 15. The great sage replied, Certainly I have a desire to marry, and your daughter has not yet married or given her word to anyone. Therefore our marriage according to the Vedic system can take place. Because <laughs> he knew she already fixed her mind on him, and it would be bad for her if he says no. Then she cannot properly serve another husband if she was he be rejected. So he was very considerate about that. And this is this is the system in those days, eh? the Vedic culture in those days. They're very concerned about uh, the repercussions that can take place in the long run. Eh? Very careful about that. Uh, if you take the case of uh, Bhishma, when uh, Amba when she requested, he said no, but as a Kshatriya, he should have helped her out, but he refused. Because he was more concerned about his wow. vow than the, the repercussions or the long-term effect or the benefits or whatever. He, he didn't think <coughs> like that. So when he did that, you, you can see what happened, the whole thing, right? She, she gave up her, her life and she took birth as Shikindi and then she came back to kill him like that. Such terrible things can happen, uh, but that's only the 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 really terrible side of it. But in in as essentially, if uh, the girl has already uh, given her mind or heart to someone, it's very hard for her to put in someone. Even if she gets married, she will never be satisfied. So that's the main point that Prabhupada wants us to understand here, and and the reason for so uh, Kardama Muni to also say yes. Because she's also very qualified. Why why would he say no anyway? Text sixteen. <laughs> Let your daughter's desire for marriage, which is recognized mm. in the Vedic scriptures, be fulfilled. Who would not accept her hand? She is so beautiful that her bodily luster alone she excels the beauty of her ornaments. So she's very beautiful. She's so beautiful that even whatever she's wearing cannot compare to her beauty, like the Lord. Eh? So this is a, a, a very first-class marriage because the father is bringing the girl to the uh, husband and say, marry her. And there are other types of marriage. Prabhupada says there are eight forms of marriage mentioned in the scripture. Okay. 
but basically this is the way the best form otherwise there is the uh, brahma uh, or rajasika one proposes a marriage proper explains like that or by love or by exchange of garlands or rakshasa marriage or by kidnap like that so there are other types also but this is the uh, best type Okay, text seventeen. Yamha Nepriste Konadan Vishuham Yamha Nepriste Konadan Vishuham Vikri the Tim Kandu Kandu Kavik Malachi Vikri the Tim Kandu Kavik Malachi Vishwavasur Nepatats without Vimana Vishwavasur Nepatats without Vimana I have heard that Vishwavasu, the great Gandharva, his mind stupefied with infatuation, fell from his airplane after seeing your daughter playing ball with a playing with the ball on the roof of the palace. For she was indeed beautiful with the tinkling ankle bells and her eyes moving to and fro. So, I mean, she is also very famous already because of the Gandharva. Uh, generally, you don't, uh, this um, princess like Devuti, they don't go out of the palace and mix around and do nonsense. Uh, but she was on top of her pa uh, palace, right? Yeah. Playing, and he saw her beauty, Vishwa Vasu, and he fell. So, there's, obviously, there's, in those days, there's a system of rumors also. So, even Gardama Muni heard about it. <laughs> Nobody, somehow they have their own system of Twitter or something. So, text 18. <laughs> What wise man would not welcome her, the very ornament of womanhood, the beloved daughter of Swayam Bhuva Manu and sister Uttanapada? Those who have not worshipped the gracious feet of the goddess of fortune cannot even perceive her, yet she has come of her own accord to seek my hand. <coughs> so he is also praising her. She is very qualified, I think. And she is the daughter of the emperor. <laughs> and so Prabhupada says that, you know, she was the daughter of the Emperor Swayambhavamuna and sister of King Uttanapada. Who could refuse the hand of such a girl? Text 19. Whatever. <laughs> Therefore, I shall accept this chase girl as my wife on the condition. Now he gives his condition. On the condition that after she bears semen from my body, I shall accept the life of devotional service accepted by the most perfect human beings. That process was described by Lord Vishnu. It is free from envy, devotional service. So he, he is saying he will he'll marry, but as soon as she delivers a child, he's leaving. Making it very clear. So basically, you can see he's not attached to sex life at all, or married life. He doesn't mind because he he wants to serve the Lord. 
father's, his father's instruction. Who? Brahma's instruction. So he wanted to do that. So therefore he thought about that. Yeah. So in the purport, Prabhupada writes in the second paragraph, Kardama Muni desired to beget a child who would be a ray of supreme personality of Godhead. Because the Lord told him, remember? He said, he said, I'll come as a expansion. So that's all he wanted to do. One should beget a child who can perform the duties of Vishnu. Otherwise, there's no need to produce children. <laughs> so either you, you have a child who can become Krishna conscious, or you have a child who is a Supreme Lord himself. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's the only Prabhupada's point is that. <laughs> you want to have a child, make sure they are good devotees or make sure they are the Lord himself. They can <laughs> 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 Otherwise, don't waste time. <laughs> Yeah, that that's uh, that's the point. I remember when I first uh, was in the movement, many times uh, the, the, the parents would say, "Oh, we do not know which demigod or goddess is going to take birth, to my child, <laughs> like that." <laughs> After many many years, they would say, "My child is a demon or something." Like that. <laughs> it was funny though, <laughs> but. Uh, but you can see Prabhupada's point is very important. Yeah, you can have children, but educate them in Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, you are not being a, a good parent. <coughs> because if, if the children don't uh, learn properly the, uh, the necessities of life, the purpose behind life, huh? uh, how the whole creation is and what purpose we, were, we actually were created, if they don't understand all that, then they'll become like cats and dogs. And then it will just be a disturbance for the whole society, for your family, everything. It'll be incompatible, right? If you're Krishna conscious and your kid is not, it's just going to be so incompatible. <laughs> real, real difficult. So there won't be peace at home and then you'll feel very unhappy. Sometimes you may think, why I became a devotee? You have to go through all these problems. <laughs> no, this is how it is. This is the age of Kali, so we have to uh, train the next generation properly. So, and then towards the end of that paragraph, Prabhupada writes, Kardama Muni explains beforehand that he would not associate with girl Devahuti for the whole duration of his life. He would simply associate with her until she had a child. Okay. So he was very clear about that. And then in the next paragraph, towards the end, Prabhupada writes, in the same order as Kardama Muni, about 100 years ago, Thakur Bhaktivinoda also wanted to beget a child who would preach the philosophy and teachings of Lord Chaitanya to the fullest extent. By his prayers to the Lord he had, as his child, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj, who at the present moment is preaching the philosophy of Lord Chaitanya through the entire world through his bona fide disciples. Take Never credit. take any credit. <laughs> Never does. And, and Bhakti Nataku is at the ray of Vishnu. Yeah. It's amazing how it's just amazing. Actually, Prabhupada's humility. Text 20. The highest authority for me is the unlimited Supreme Personality of Godhead, from whom this wonderful creation emanates, and in whom its sustenance and dissolution rests, 
is the origin of all prajapatis. The personality is meant to produce living entities in this world. <coughs> because his own father is a prajapati, he was ordered to produce children. So, so he says, my, my, I will take from the Supreme Lord. He is my authority. So he, he has already told him who to marry. So he is also thinking of that. <coughs> Prabhupada writes in the second paragraph, If someone engages only in the service of the Supreme Lord, the Personality of Godhead, who is actually worshipable, then even without trying to liquidate other debts, one becomes free from all obligations. Kardama Muni preferred to devote his life as a servant of the Lord in Paramahansa, knowledge and to beget a child only for that purpose not to beget numberless children to fill up the vacancies in the universe <laughs> so he had a strong understanding why he wanted to do that not not for any other reason so very very focused because he knew his worshipable deity is Vishnu and he wanted to go back to Godhead not all this lifestyle, no. He had some desire and, and he he proposed to the Lord what to do and the Lord sanctioned to just do this, meditate on me and come back to me. And I was also, you know, he's, he's just an amazing person. Right? He had a desire. Still the Lord said, I will become your son. <laughs> so he's very, it's an amazing personality we are dealing with. Huh? Um, about them, Relate so many pastimes of amazing personality, so very dear to the Lord, actually. This entire uh, lineage from Swambhu Manu, it's just amazing. The Lord cried. Hmm? The Lord cried. The Lord cried when he did austerities. No? <laughs> it's so much, that means we, we really don't understand that the, the intimacy between the Lord and Kardama Muni. How dear he is to the Supreme Lord. So this is not an ordinary, when we are reading this, we shouldn't see it as a mundane thing. It's not. They are on a different level altogether. Later on when you read, you'll be astonished some of the things. <laughs> Text 21. Maitreya Uvacha Maitreya Uvacha Sri Maitriya said, O great warrior Vidura, the sage Kardama said this much only and then became silent, thinking of his worshipable Lord Vishnu, who has a lotus on his navel. As he silently smiled, his face captured the mind of Devahuti, who began to meditate upon the great sage. <laughs> so he was, he just said and he didn't talk anymore. He said what he wanted to say and then he started to meditate on Vishnu. And he started to smile when he was thinking of the Lord. But at the same time, Devuti saw him and she she began to uh, even uh, become more attracted to him when she saw him. Right? It appears that Kardama Muni was fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness. Because as soon as he became silent, he at once began to think of Lord Vishnu. Right? For most of us, we become silent and we'll think of 10 million things. Right? All the problems. <laughs> All the other problems and so on. So, it's, uh, so, therefore, we should feel humble when we read this. You know? That is the way of Krishna consciousness. So, Prabhupada says if we do our Krishna consciousness properly, we will also become like Kardama Muni. As soon as we keep quiet and meditate, we will see the Lord. But we have to practice. That's why I always say, read Krishna book or something before you go to sleep. Just a little bit. Because 
that little bit will be uh, inoculation that may help you. You never know when it will help you. Pure devotees are so absorbed in thought of Krishna that they have no other engagement. Although they may seem to think or act otherwise, they are always thinking of Krishna. The smile of such a Krishna conscious person is so attractive that simply by smiling he wins so many admirers, disciples and followers. <laughs> But he is Krishna conscious, not that he is out to get so many things. That's the reason. Now, when, uh, when Kardama was smiling and Devoti looked at him, we shouldn't think of it as a mundane thing. It's not mundane. Okay? It's a, it's de because he's a pure devotee and she is not a normal, uh, ordinary person. She's also an elevated personality. So Jiva Goswami says, not to think of this as a mundane thing that's smiling and all that. The affection they are showing is not mundane at all. Text 22. <laughs> After having unmistakably known the decision of the queen as well as that of Devahuti, the emperor most gladly gave his daughter to the sage whose host of virtues was equaled by hers. They already, he already knew that Devahuti won't marry anyone else and the queen already said yes already. So this is that we are, we are we are getting to know now <laughs> that it was the decision was already made. They they were going to beg Kardama Muni to take if if it didn't happen. Text twenty three. <laughs> Empress Shatarupa lovingly gave most valuable presents suitable for the occasion such as jewelry, clothes and household articles in dowry to the bride and bridegroom. So now they are already like going to get married at that moment. <laughs> yeah. So already they, they brought all this paraphernalia also. So just imagine, no? She she just heard about Kardama Muni, and then she's going to start life like that. There's no time of uh, spending one week there, one week here, like that, right? Nowadays you get married, you don't even want to go to the husband's house or whatever, or the one, right? It's like that. But you, here you see, everything is brought for her by the father and mother, and to to Kardama Muni to show that they are uh, ready to help. In settling down the daughter. Text 24. Oh, uh, yeah. Shatarupa is the, the wife. The wife. Wife of Manu. Text 24. <laughs> Thus relieved of his responsibility by handing over his daughter to a suitable man, Swayambhu Manu, his mind agitated by feelings of separation, embraced his affectionate daughter with both his arms. So much uh, love he has for his daughter. <laughs> a father always remains in anxiety until he can hand over his grown-up daughter to a suitable boy. This is a, a cultured person. Uh, if it's uncultured, they don't care. They will say, get out of the house. Why don't you find yourself some guy and get hooked up or something? That's why you go away. So I don't have to take care of you. That's a Kali Yuga situation. 
A father and mother's responsibility for children continues until they marry them to suitable spouses. Nowadays, even though they marry, then depends. If, the, if it's a son, the parents will live with the son. And then if it's a daughter, they will still keep in touch and either fight with the in-laws or fight with the other people, right? Normal, right? Nowadays, I have to have, must fight. <laughs> Then raise the grandchildren. Yeah, raise the grandchildren. And like fight over the grandchildren. Fight over the grandchildren. So not like that. Huh? You can see how so cultured they know exactly that everything is safe. Because they, everyone is brought up nicely and they know what is right and wrong. You are in anxiety if you don't know what the future is. <laughs> so that's what's happening in Kali Yuga. Most of the time they think, oh, they are doing wrong. Mm -hmm. We didn't do this. Why are you doing that, right? <laughs> That's the situation. <clears throat> okay, when the father is able to perform that duty, he is relieved of his responsibility. Because <laughs> he knows now, my daughter is taken care by a good boy, like that. Nowadays you don't know, right? Now they are seeing if the guy has money or not. Right? If he has money, he must be good. But he can be a debauchee, no? He can be a drunk, he can be a womanizer, he can go after nonsense. They don't care as long as there's money. So it's, that's not the, the right thing to do. Eh? That is actually a, a criminal, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a criminal offense. To let your daughter be, you know, abused by some idiot. Like you were saying, right? In those days when they know that son is not qualified, they won't even want him to marry. <laughs> yeah. But nowadays they don't care. I heard that in India they want the sons to get married because they will get dowries. What is this nonsense? Where is it says? <laughs> and they and they according to the degree of the boy they ask that much. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> but then though I feel like the say the girls side they already know they're getting <coughs> married to a cheat like they're getting a daughter married to a cheat. Exactly. So then what, what can I mean then why are they expecting something good out of that too? Because they're all fools. Like my grandfather got my aunt and like they arranged the engagement with somebody. Somebody. And he was uh, he was a doctor. Mm. And then they said that uh, my doctor, my son wants to go to US to study. Mm. So if you sponsor the ticket, that will be good. My grandfather just called up the whole thing. He said he's already doing. Most. Doctor. No, he's already asking for a ticket to. Mm. They just they just engaged and they're asking for a ticket to go to US mm. at that time. Yeah. Seventies. So I don't know what all they're going to ask. Know what kind of consciousness they have, I don't know. He just called the whole thing. So he, saw, he saw something, I'm sure. Yeah. There's something not good. Yeah, because he said, how can they ask? I am sending my daughter so that he can support my daughter. He's yeah. asking. Well, they are thinking, well, you 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 know, you need the boy. That's how <laughs> the Indian mentality is, right? Yeah. So. Uh, Once you give and back, then the will keep continuing. <laughs> Yeah, it's, that's really true actually, like in India, every now and then, they say, they say, see it in movies, but it actually happens. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the main thing know. is, yeah, I know what you're saying is true. The main thing is, will you do it? <laughs> think about it, because you all are, you grew up in that culture, you all have to think. <laughs> what, what happens? Are you going to? Like in your case, you have daughter, you'll have to give. You are thinking already. <laughs> <laughs> the guy with the boy, he'll think, I'm going to get something. Right? So that's a problem. That culture is wrong. We have to... Papa didn't, didn't want us to be like that. More important is the spiritual thing. Quality huh, of the person. Guna of the person is most important. Text 25. Sakuvamska 
The emperor was unable to bear the separation of his daughter. <laughs> Therefore, tears poured from his eyes again and again, drenching his daughter's head as he cried, My dear mother, my dear daughter. <laughs> Uh, there is a significance why he calls her mother and daughter. Because she's only daughter until she gets married and then she becomes not his responsibility. She becomes mother. <laughs> the word Amba is significant. A father sometimes addresses his daughter in affection as mother and sometimes as my darling. The feeling of separation occurs because until the daughter is married, she remains the daughter of the father. But after her marriage, she is no longer claimed as a daughter in the family. She must go to the husband's house. For after marriage, she becomes the property of the husband. Of course, it's not like he owns or whatever. Huh? Please, um, According to Manu Samhita, a woman is never independent. Because of that, she's not independent. So she becomes under the protection of the husband. She must remain the property of the father once she's not married and she must remain the property of the husband until she is elderly and has grown up children of her own. In old age, when the husband has taken sannyasa and left home, she remains the property of the sons. A woman is always dependent either upon the father, husband or elderly sons that will be exhibited in the life of Devahuti. Devahuti's father handed over the responsibility for her to the husband, Kardama Muni. And in the same way, Kardama Muni also left home, giving the responsibility to his son, Kapila Deva. This narration will describe these events one after another. So, a lot of people might read this and they're going to have problems with the word property. <laughs> right? Huh? Of course. Yeah, definitely. How are you going to overcome that? Yeah, how would you explain to them what Prabhupada meant? No, I mean, it's supposed to be respected and valuable. Yeah. It's supposed to be kept in safety. Yeah. They're like the society's heirloom. I read Don Juan Maharaj's thing. He said that they're like the society's heirloom. Mm -hmm. Because they, because on them the culture of the society depends and then from them the next generation. Yeah, the basis for, for sustenance of culture. So just like you protect your heirloom very, mm. very carefully, the men protect the heirloom very, very carefully. Yeah. So similarly, the men protect the women very, very carefully. Yeah, but most of the time, people won't want to hear that. They'll say, but you you say the property. property. We are not a property. We are not a commodity. We are also human. We have feelings. Actually, it's the language. Yeah, it is the language. So you need to actually yeah. explain that. Uh, how the terminology property means, you know, the current term, the word property means like something, Change, yeah. yeah, but yeah. in those and days, it's not like that, yeah. Some of the words property used to have, for example, cult. Yes, it cult is not a bad, yeah, it's not, now it's negative, yeah. So, you, you have to really uh, explain very nicely, huh? otherwise it's going to be difficult. And it's going to be difficult. <laughs> Those who want to change, they will will not. They may question why, but they will change. They will accept. But those who don't want, will use this as a ammunition to say, "This is why I don't like this movements yeah. or so organized movement." There was one Prabhuji who used to come to the temple, and his wife like, was accepting everything. I don't agree with. Uh, how Prabhupada is talking about women, so I cannot accept it. Yeah. Because he wants to abuse her. <laughs> Actually, underneath, that's what it is. Yeah. And, and when he reads where Prabhupada always says protection, they cannot accept that. The protection and also Prabhupada talk about responsibility. No, he was referring, but actually, but what he was specifically referring was the first chapter. And okay. like those things, like say they were property and so Yeah. But as you said, he wants to. He just wants to abuse. You know. If you don't have all that, it's easy. Underneath the so called yeah. people who are right fighting for the women's. It's, no, they want to abuse women actually. Maybe he was. Uh, 
Who knows? But anyway, <laughs> it's not helping out the women's cause, actually. Bhagavad Gita, also that first chapter, Arjuna was talking about how the woman has to be protected very much. He was giving argument. Yes. Giving that they should be protected so that Varma Shankar cannot do yeah. this and that will present the whole society and degradation. Is that like responsibility from Shatriya side also and from common responsibility for taking care of women? Mm. This could have a positive connotation also. Yeah, you have to know how to present yeah, it. No? Yeah. If somebody reads it, they'll see it different. Uh, but you may take it different. So when it comes from a different perspective, it may make more sense. Right? Like people are very attached to property. They're very protective yeah. of their property. Yeah. So, so that's one way of explaining. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's a nice idea. Hmm? There was one devotee I had a conversation uh, with in the temple for a long time back. It was very much, I was amazed. I used to see him. Uh, doing service a lot but one time I had a private conversation he was strongly against because of this thing this he was very new at that time mm. very strongly against but uh, and so I was really I never had a conversation like that with anybody he was just pointing out to the specific verses he could have mm. used and mm. I was totally I tried to explain something but he was like uh, but he would serve in the temple like anything was he chant? That I don't know. Yeah. But then sometime, but sometime back. Yeah. After, this is after a few years. Yes. Yeah. And uh, he was no longer in Seattle. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> then I get an email from him, Where and uh, I think he's the same person because the this way he signed is different. Mm. He was not. He was initiated in devotee, mm. and he was just sending me an email after years. When I note contact with him, and he's saying I remember our conversation okay and uh, now i understand yeah. and i have been always thinking about reaching out to you after my initiation i wanted to specifically connect with you to tell you that he was wrong yeah it was pretty amazing <laughs> <laughs> after like years, change of heart after so many years yeah, yeah it was a few years yeah. Yeah. so maybe he took up chanting all the prashadam and all finally purified the yeah. consciousness yeah. Yeah, Prabhu is Yeah, yeah Lava Matra. <laughs> no, it, it is. No, Everybody has some because no, he remembers you. The temple, like anything. Yeah, but he, he remembers. Yeah. Like, he was always there for us. Yeah. yeah. So that's why, you know, it's important to set good examples. Even when they read, when you have a good example out there, then they cannot find faults like that. Mm -hmm. Right? If they read something, they, it's disturbing. Then when, but they see good devotees who are also reading the same thing, then they'll have to think about it. How is that? You know? Then they'll talk about it and then they'll get their worries eased up. But yeah, so it's an interesting terminology for the modern age, becoming a property. <laughs> also, just one more thing, like when we were uh, in the Lady Sutra, we were doing the first chapter, when we reached those yeah. the verses, we even had the issue. Yeah. And then... Um, I How did saved, you all resolve it? I don't know, it was easy there because I had saved some articles which I had read on CNN uh -huh. um, about the war in Afghanistan and the war in Iraq. And there were specific articles on how, because of the war, so many of the women are left without husbands mm. and sons and you know elders to take care of them and how they are you know going through all the things that Arjuna is talking about. Mm -hmm. So when I showed them those articles and we discussed those articles and all, they're like, oh, Arjuna was thinking like that. He was thinking. <laughs> yeah, that's good. You you used your intelligence nicely. Yeah, yeah. I was just lucky to have those. No, it's not a matter of luck. There's a reason. It's true. It's the truth. Yeah. So, and then I said, no, this is happening now. So yeah. Arjuna was just concerned about this not happening. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. They should understand that. You know, a lot of times Prabhupada uses things we cannot fully understand at the moment because we are not qualified to understand. It may take a lot of purification, years of service, then you... Oh! <laughs> like that friend of yours, a so-called associate, yeah. Oh, now I know why. It is, it is. Yeah. Like some things you are reading now, you may not really get the grasp, the full yeah. gist of it. Maybe later on, you see. It's like, 
Kardama Muni, when he gets married afterwards, they travel the whole universe. They get, get to see all the the layout of the universe. We never got to see that. <laughs> so it's like that. <laughs> Some things you will understand as you do more and more. Say. But, but there's nothing wrong with what Prabhupada is saying. Because he says, according to Manu Samhita, he's not saying what he feels is right. Oh, Prabhupada always back up. Huh? No, he said Prabhupada always backs up his thing. I read this somewhere, but I got I got really disturbed by mm. it. Um, I read one, uh, and I'll share it with you. I read one Prabhupada decided to share a quote on Facebook as to how Manu Samhita is not applicable. The female disciple is not applicable in Kali Yuga and something else is applicable. So all these people who are holding this Manu Samhita against... Um, Women. Yeah, it's, no, it's not correct. So I, I was like, no, but Prabhupada said that. Yeah, exactly. You have to see what Prabhupada said. These people are not the Acharyas. You have to follow what the Acharyas say. And if you have a problem with the Acharya, then you actually have a problem. You're the one who's having the problem. Because Prabhupada is saying this is not something. Yeah. So that's why I said, remember in the few weeks ago, I said, when I read, I just... Okay, that's what Prabhupada says. <laughs> it, it, at that moment, <coughs> if you accept something, it's not a question of whether you completely understand or not. But you, you, you accept to some level, okay, they have to be. When I see property, I'm thinking, oh, they have to be protected. I'm not thinking like, you know, you put it in your storeroom and lock <laughs> it up like that. You know, it's not like that. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, but people like that will say, property, what do you mean property, you know? So, different culture will, will awaken a different set of intellect, you know, the way the culture is. Most of the time, it's whatever in their heart, that's what it's, they will But decide. usually people who are strongly, that's what I observed, that any woman who's strongly following her faith, like whether, even if she's a Jewish lady or something, yeah. I see they follow the principles of yes. religion thing very nicely yeah. and they believe in it. Yeah. But you see, our movement have, is having some problems. A lot of the ladies want equality, equal rights. Actually, it hasn't gone since the 60s. The same things are coming, right? They want to be called the same. Prabhu. Yeah, Prabhu. No, I read one who's Prabhuvi. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Prabhuvi. The right term is Prabhuvi, right? If they want. But they don't. They say, well, Prabhu called me Prabhu. So well, if Prabhupada had called you donkey, then everyone should call you donkey also. Would you have liked that then? Right? Correct or not? So they, they don't argue like that. They argue because Prabhupada said that. Anyway, it's a... Prabhupada said Mother Chiva has to address this. In the book, he writes very clearly. So if there's a question of contention, my Guru Maharaj said the book is the authority. So in the book, Prabhupada says women must be addressed as mothers. Mm -hmm. I heard from Jayadvit Maharaj, books are the first, second are his lectures, yes. third are his uh, letters. Letters and so on, and conversations. Yes. Right. Because time, but place, and so on. More yeah. than the books, you see. But anyway, Manu Samhita says women must be addressed as I don't know if I should label Chanaka the point. Also says, huh? I, I don't know if I should label the point anymore, but then I had, uh, when we were doing this course here, celebrating through women, we were discussing these things and trying to understand what Prabhupada is saying. Uh, so to understand some things I connected with some uh, points people, people like some Mataji who Prabhupada decided mm. and some of them said that uh, I don't know they started talking to me about the female Diksha Guru issue and so I said I'm not interested in this thing you know I only need to understand this thing so if you have you know I want to hear what you, you, know, yeah, yeah, you yeah. want to say about yeah. this so um and I got that like a lot of places and I said, you know, this disturbs me when I see that, you know, we're focusing on this rather than other things. So yeah. So it disturbs my mind. So I don't want to, you know, we should be focusing more on like how can we help the woman rather than these things. So they said, no, we're not. It's not about that. <laughs> uh, they said that we're not fighting for equality. We're fighting for, you know, just basic things that we need. You know, why should we be in the back of the temple? Or why should we be treated like, you know, second class citizen? Or why should we be doing Tulsi Aarti out in the forum? I said, it's not happening anymore, so why are we talking about it? <laughs> but then, that's how they were defending their call for equality. They always do, because this is Kali Yuga. <laughs> 
it has to happen right there must be some problems like that but it's a fact in the in the early 60s and 70s a lot of these ladies were not uh, treated well and that's also that's a fact so, so that's why we went to gpc yeah. and that's yeah. why we did all of these yeah. things yeah maybe but then uh, but they also not thinking practically the instructions of the acharya how it should fit in the, in the whole uh, you know life of uh, our culture how how is it going to be presented in in 10000 year for 10000 how is it going to be they are more worried about putting a woman as a guru than to becoming krishna conscious yeah right the, what is the, our whole thing you know the main principle is krishna conscious smartavya satatam vishnu that is the thing the other things are secondary it's not important it's actually not important that's what proper purpose to knowledge yeah well, if it has to happen to automatically happen all these rules so be again i don't care i'll yeah. tell you this honestly <laughs> if they want to appoint someone as good hey good for you you know you you live with all the problems i i serve my guru i know how difficult a guru's position is go for it <laughs> yeah particularly who who i don't know if even if you look at it if a woman is a guru how many men will go right that's one thing to actually take shelter and if a man takes shelter of a woman they, it it's going to cause some issues in the beginning unless the woman is so advanced you know? like janava mata like that you know those personality even then they were not they always go to the next example <laughs> they are not going out they initiate like, uh, actively never I, i don't think so like that. um yeah you know if you, if you think about it right let them do it and you think it's so easy to be a guru god yeah, it's so difficult Plus every balance. tom dick and harry will come and throw their rooms <laughs> vomit at you <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that you think a guru is having a easy time? No, so much they have to deal with. Every small, you know, this one, my wife and I have a problem, you know, I don't like this, but then she always cooks that thing. Why the guru <laughs> need to know that? <laughs> yeah, you all laugh. I heard so many versions. So guru is not an easy thing. What is the role of a spiritual master? Yes, to go back to god then <laughs> so yeah anyway that's their problem i i leave it to the gbc that's why they are there <laughs> let them make the decision yeah and if they want to do it go for it if they don't want to. but if you look at and you read the dandava it's so political yeah so let's not get into it relax to say such thing huh for a guru for yeah. spiritual master yeah the only thing is entangled is to get the karma of the disciple <laughs> <laughs> if somebody is willing to take that then he should get the karma that's yeah. the only thing yeah yeah <laughs> i mean that's a fact that's a absolute fact so from last was on for meeting like before 9:00 yeah 9:00 no so he is going out of town so and first he is coming back so he asked for us to go oh go ahead i was just going to end up with this time says no i just want to no i was just saying that you the show was talking about that contract planning so when i came to see her today yeah so the first sunday lecture was hearing about hari das prabhu so whenever he talked about bhagavad gita shloka so always he was connecting to the real world examples okay. what happened and because in just sitting philosophy is not able to understand so when he talk about in context with something and talking about how this problem is like just like how you know speaking or mm-hmm. this issue has been they still is that talking about politics and some nature happened so that was his connecting yeah. each time each shloka and purport of hope that was really helpful so i was saying like as you said context is very important and giving example how do we present yeah because just talking directly from philosophy is it will totally heavy part yeah um so tomorrow we'll start at 10 10 at the uh, nitya goranga prabhu's place tomorrow is ekadashi um the next day is sunday we are having it at damodar oh damodar prabhu's house at 10 also till tomorrow 4 
we'll go to tomorrow for yes for then uh, Sunday breakfast is at 7.57. Okay. Alright. Shalabrabha the key. Jai.